Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, congratulations on a monumental exhibition, Chicago Architecture Biennial. Yay. Uh, <laughs> 80 artists, That's 11 sites across the city. Um, titled, This is a Rehearsal, and I thought that's a place we could start because that's an idea that's important to both of us. Yeah, I think it's really an excuse just not to be done with the show. Um, but no, it, it, I, I, I think This is Rehearsal really came out of um, my collective floating uh, museum's practice of kind of, um, which also comes, thinks about like Margaret Burroughs founding of Tusaba Museum in her home about kind of community influenced like design practices. So coming in with an idea but willing to change the direction of the idea or the form of that idea based on the input as it comes in. So I think we brought that into the biannual and also want to think about points of entry. So this is a rehearsal kind of takes some of the tension out of having answers and sets the ground for play, uh, which can also be research, which also can like, like give us space to try some things out and not be the authority. Um, so we kind of, uh, the people that we invited, uh, the architects, designers, community participants, we saw them all as contributors. Um, we kind of went with that prompt and, and it took some of the edge off of kind of quote unquote delivery of timeline bi biannuals, some of the ethical issues of pushing a show versus how it uh, engages with community and sometimes your partner's timeline isn't the show's timeline. So what can be done in that time? How is this useful for you? Um, we, know, we know what the biennial needs. They need a show, they need a, you know, certain things, fine, we'll figure that out. But how can we also figure out you know, how our community uh, partners kind of do? Um, so this is where we were talking outside. Um, um, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about town the public and, Sure, I, I want to pick up on that thought you just concluded on, that the exhibition space is a sort of temporary window into seeing the work that's often confused with what the work is, but the work actually took a long time to get there and continues after, and that the exhibition is this frame, this sort of temporal frame where you get to invite audiences to sort of peek in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in addition to being this sort of temporal frame, it's also a spatial frame. Um, so the idea of a rehearsal is something that I started to work with before Walls Turn Sideways, but really try to operationalize it there. So making an exhibition about the prison industrial complex at the intersection of mass incarceration, um, my first question was like, what does it mean to think about those questions within the space of the museum? And thinking about the ground on which the museum was built and sort of begin to undo the ways in which that relationship is also related to the relationship of the prison or the institution of the prison. Mm. And thinking about then as a ground that is open to sort of practice, perform, imagine, stage different conversations about how we could enact Angela Davis's statements. What does it mean to turn a wall sideways to make a bridge? And thinking about that space as a, a temporary physical space where we can examine that possibility. And so the moving into counter publics, we're working in public space and shifting that idea over there. So if y'all aren't familiar, I was one of five curators um, invited to come to St. Louis to organize a response in relation to the city. St. Louis is an incredibly complicated um, space and thinking about the physical ground there, it is the space. I've been calling it the gateway to dispossession. It's the space in which all U.S. soldiers who fought in the Plain Wars West, when St. Louis became the frontier, all of those soldiers went west and dispossessed Native peoples and made paved ways for settlers. It is also what I also call the edge of the South. It was a space um, in which communities fled to or through on their way to places like Chicago. So it has an incredible history of like black legacy and also displacement. Um, so thinking about those multiple spaces, thinking about how do you make a public art exhibition that doesn't restage an occupation or doesn't, um, uh, can evade surveillance. And I know that some of these 
kind of operations of the city, how public space operates, and then how do we not re replicate those right. systems? Right. Something you're thinking about too. I mean, one of the, to answer that is like, how do you make a public exhibition? You invite the public to make the exhibition. Um, <clears throat> we often think about not uh, for, but with. Mm -hmm. um, it was like, like, we have a kind of a kooky biennial. It's, um, we, we, we flew around and well, at least my partners did. And they came and said, man, some of these architecture biennials are really dry. Like it's just a, it's like a thesis on a wall. And that's, 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 that's kind of like great, like for like insider baseball. But it's like, that's not really, that's one community, right? It's an architectural community, which is an important community. But it's also important to think about points of entry. If you're really thinking about how to bring in different types of knowledge, different types of experiences, you, you have to open it up a little bit. So it was really important for us to like curate things that were fun, you know, like Tiny Desk. Like we love Tiny Desk concerts, right? Like, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's like, but the office space, the cubicle culture in design actually had a massive impact on architecture, right? So it's like figuring out once again that level playing ground where you can bring people in so they can have dialogues and then build things beyond. Um, but also kind of going back to the speed of trust, right? I mean, we've seen what happens with like things like the Olympics when it comes into a place and they do an event and then you're left with the infrastructure uh, that communities have to figure out what to do with and they're just kind of gone. So we really didn't want to curate a show that did that. We also have the benefit of being a Chicago-based institution. So we merged our mission of partnering in all of our like city sites. Like number one, there's no off sites. There's city sites, like, like we have a downtown sites, we have sites in Inglewood, sites on Devon, um, and really understanding those sites and our, our, our partner's interest mm -hmm. and how, like, like looking out for that. So we're not gonna like team you up with an artist or an organization or funding that's gonna pull you down at the end. So that, that was one of our goals from the outset. So we're still, some of these things are still in rehearsal. Uh, we're still working through them and we'll continue working through them beyond the exhibition. So we're having fun. Also fun. Like fun's kind of cool. Like we like to have fun. Like, you know. Well, I appreciate you just naming that sometimes these biennial experiences are dry. They're pretty dry. <laughs> and then um, I think the biennial, triennial phenomenon I was trying to contend with was um, I'd been to too many biennials that had taken me on a treasure hunt for trauma. Right, right, Yes. Um, so you're new to a city and then you're, in, you're investigating it through this exhibition map and um, being led on an artist's journey that takes you to an incredibly terrible history that's like, then I made a project and then it was, uh, and then that was addressed and we're gonna call it re a reparation or a reparative. And so also wanna avoid that you're Energy. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I don't, um, so I think what I did instead was think about the geography of the space. It's a confluence of rivers, and I thought about how those rivers brought people down to those spaces, and how what a return could look like, what an unbuilding or return could look like, and that led me to invite four artists that were related to St. Louis via the river. So like Jean Quick to see Smith would, and I had long conversations about how St. Louis was the departure point for the French to get all the way up to Montana or the Missouri River that connects Chinupa's people down to St. Louis or X um, being Cachata from Louisiana and then bringing Anita Fields in from Osage back to her ancestral homeland. And then also thinking again about that question, not how do you not restage a ex occupation using public art? That's where like sound, plants, um, Chinupa did an amazing augmented reality project that I'm happy to show y'all how to use. Um, Reimagining, or actually it's a performative action that invites the buffalo back to St. Louis. And that sets in motion a conceptual shift that makes ask a series of questions. What do we need to do to make that happen? We'd have to unlock the Mississippi. We'd have to water the prairie. We'd have to, and then it kind of builds out from there. 
So not getting mired in the trauma, but kind of opening space for bringing visibility to things that have been erased and then also finding possibility. You know, one of the things that comes up a lot is audience, mm. right? And I think different spaces have different ecologies and operate differently. One of the things, uh, one of our partners was um, uh, Erica Allen and Urban Growers Collective. Any Urban Growers Collective in the house? Woo, woo. Okay. Um, but we went down there and we had a press tour. And one of these questions was like, oh, like, if you don't know, it's a great, for those that aren't aware of Urban Growers, um, look up Erica Allen doing some amazing work, has a huge team, but the site we're specifically talking about is kind of in southeast on Park District land, and um, it's, just, it's just an amazing site. I mean, when you meet her, she's just like walking through the garden, just like eating leaves and like, have some leaves, and then I'm like, no, we're actually doing a digester, the biggest in the world, and it's the biggest, a three-story building, and you're like, wait a minute, the farmers? Like, no, it's, it's, She's a rock star, she's amazing, brilliant. Um, so it's like this, you know, so the question was like, oh, it's a community garden, yeah. I'm like, well, how does the community accept the garden? And she's like, that's a weird, weird, weird question. Like, we are the community, I don't understand. Like, there is no, like, this um, kind of exchange thing. Like, 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 we serve you, you get something. Like, it's just very, you know, and kind of changing how we think about that. So when people ask me about audience, I'm like, yeah, you're welcome to come or not. Like, I really don't care one way or the other. It's great, you miss out or you come. It's not a show, mm -hmm. it's the work being done and the audience are the producers, right? Like, like the producers are the audience, you know? Like, so that's the type of thing and it, and, and it has multiplier effects that not only hit that community but many others. Um, with the Floating Museum, we always say we don't actually work with community at all. We work with the people who work with community. And by giving them resources, highlighting their work, then that has multiplier effects on the communities they serve. So, um, yeah, just, I mean, that's some of this, like when we talk about a biennial, I mean, we'll move beyond a biennial and just get to the work. The biennial is an excuse to highlight something. It's just, a, to your point, a way station to do some fun stuff with a little bit extra money. Um, but how does it, how does the work move beyond? Mm -hmm. And I'm actually more interested in the allyship that we built through this process, the knowledge base of how to move across the city, the resources, the municipalities, um, needs and interests and know-how, and then internationally, how we can make that benefit Chicago and how Chicago can vice versa benefit those international partners. So all the people that were selected were strategically selected, not for the show, but actually beyond the show. Mm -hmm. It's building a web. So I, I think that's what it can do. Um, yeah, well. you're also reminding me of some things that we've talked about in our conversations. Um, how these large scale exhibitions are also opportunities to keep asking. Yeah. To like, well, you want to fund an exhibition? Great, how about we fund something <laughs> like rematriating this site? How about we fund uh, like an interaction with changing, like just replacing monuments or yeah reinscribing ideology, changing conceptual frameworks, and how um, part of the work that we're doing, I think, as curators, is uh, being in touch with policymakers, being that sort of middleman between audiences, people, and then leveraging in favor of people. Right. No, exactly. It's, it's been interesting moving from someone coming to Chicago 20 years or so now, or back to Chicago 20 years or so now, and um, just kind of like seeing how like it all, one thing leads to another, leads to another, and being able to still be in dialogue with those first kind of collaborators from the beginning and kind of building this like really citywide international family. Um, yeah, it's been a real magical experience. So people are like, how are you so calm after buying? I was like, yeah, because I have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So I think we're at time, but I know that we forgot to introduce ourselves. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm Fahim Majid, I'm an artist curator, uh, one of four co-directors of the Floating Museum, um, which is now a thing. It wasn't a thing originally, it's just an idea. And also, we were invited to curate the Chicago Architecture, the fifth edition of the Chicago Architecture Biennial that just recently opened at 10 different sites all over the city. And I'm Risa Paleo, and I'm a curator and art historian. I live here in Chicago. 
but don't work here in Chicago. So I was one of five curators coordinating the second counterpublic triennial in St. Louis. Do that in reverse. 